Okay, we're back live here at uh, Strata Conference in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, the founder. This is our, our prime time, 12 o'clock hour here, power hour for theCUBE, where we break down the news and analysis. And I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org, chief analyst. We got the research, we got the publishing, we got the data science. This is our SiliconANGLE Media Group. We are happy to report live on the ground at Strata Conference with O'Reilly Media. Exclusive coverage here, and wall to wall all day for three days. But this hour, we're going to break down the top news. Dave, top story here is really the gloves are coming off in the industry, a lot of competitive pressure. First time I've seen this kind of heat in, in the business. EMC announced is Green Plum, Pivotal, HD, a new distribution of Hadoop. Intel's announcing a distribution of Hadoop. Um, when lot Disco of announced. When Disco's yeah. announcing, a lot of great stuff. So Dave, I mean, this is a top story. We are seeing competitive pressure. Top story here is the pressure is hot. What's your take on, on what's happening? Two words, land grab. <laughs> um, market's big, you know, it's 11 billion growing to 50 billion and uh, everybody wants a piece of the action. Everybody says there, you know, there will be no uh, red hat of Hadoop like there was a red hat of Linux, but um, everybody's going for the platform, John. I think that uh, there's a lot of money to be made and a lot of ecosystem and a lot of services and a lot of software to be sold around whoever wins that uh, land grab. So EMC Greenplum versus Cloudera. Cloudera's getting pounded in the press. We saw GigaOM write two articles in particular highlighting uh, Green Plum in particular, going at kind of depositioning Cloudera. Another post by GigaOM talks about Cloudera who, question mark. Cloudera is getting kind of pounded as a startup is growing very, very fast. You know, they're getting a lot of heat. Uh, in addition, Wired Magazine actually in, uh, giving the impl implication that Green Plum mm -hmm. is actually endorsed by Hammerbacher in their story, um, claiming Hadoop is changing the way database is kind of inferring that Green Plum's on fire. What do you make of all this? I mean, Green Plum uh, is making a lot of noise and, and, and Hadoop is at the center of all the action. So, so again, a lot of competitive pressure. The platforms are expanding. Intel talking about integrating into silicon and making it a native platform of Hadoop, different distributions, different use cases, a lot of different market sizes. Dave, what do you, what do you make of all this? Uh, Greenplum, Cloudera first, and then secondly, other players like WAN, Disco, Intel, and others adding in their own distributions. Well, when I look at the EMC announcement, I do, I do John, think it was a strong announcement. Um, there, was, there was some meat on the bone. I, I think that they were late to the market with the notion of bringing SQL and NoSQL together, so they had to do something that was more dramatic than say, you know, what Hadap did uh, and Impala did uh, back in October or November. So having said that, you know, Greenplums tried a lot of different things. You know, they were in bed with MapR, they did their own distribution, they made the Chorus launch. You know, they've, they've rolled out some, some products in innovation um, and they've done a good job of getting that product into the hands of the EMC sales force. So there's a lot of you know, really classical EMC pushing through the EMC system. Um, now, I think that the depositioning of Cloudera is somewhat strange to me. I mean, I think Cloudera is you know, the visionary in this market. They're certainly growing. Uh, we just finished up the, the big data study. We've got them you know, well north of $50 million in revenue. They, they are- On know, a path to an IPO, some are Yeah, along with MarkLogic and, and TenGen, uh, Cloudera is you know, the top, in the top three of the NoSQL Hadoop vendors. You got so, Cassandra folks out there still growing in as well. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the, 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 the knocks against Cloudera, I think that maybe that's some tongue in cheek, maybe it's link baiting, I don't really know, but you know, Cloudera is or the leader in this market. good PR by EMC. Or good PR by EMC, but Cloudera is clearly the leader in this market, and, and yeah. now, you know, it's a fragile ecosystem, I think, here, and so that's why I think you're seeing you know, all these distributions come out. Um, IBM is the other one, you know, and, and I, I made this statement before, in, in the boring but important category, services is really the biggest share of the business and IBM is a, is a big player there. So I think you're starting to see this business really take shape, John, and real money to be made, but there's still a ton of posturing in the platforms and in database, and of course, from our standpoint, we love it. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a, a war going on here with uh, Hadoop but the positionings are different, and I think there's some credibility issues on the line here. Obviously with uh, Green Plum, the top story we're hearing from, from some, the, the counterpoint to Green Plum top story is, um, it's their fourth try, so a lot of people are attacking Green Plum on the credibility. Well, I um, think they're like Microsoft in a way, you know? The like, first one maybe not quite right, and the second one's maybe not quite right. Fourth time's third the Third one's maybe, you know. They got nine lives, or like, yeah. a, you know, <laughs> maybe I mean, the I, nine you know, times. The, the third one being the course launch. I mean, to me that was just sort of an outlier, because it's, you know, collaboration, they were sort of, 
trying to make the play that data scientists need this collaborative platform. But I think that bringing SQL to Hadoop is a, is a much more substantive announcement well, we, well, we've and more seen, mainstream. Well, we've seen Greenplum come into the marketplace. We've seen their different moves. So, so obviously, when Pat Gelsinger was in charge of EMC, he was on theCUBE. He said, hey, we're going in to make money. We're going to do some business. They backed off a little bit because it was early in the market. But now here, it's clear that there's a value proposition. We had Bill Schmarzo on, and we were covering the event yesterday. It's a solid announcement. They have software, not an appliance. They did some things, and they're targeting a market that's gettable for them. So, well, remember you know, too, remember too, the course launch, a big part of the course, frankly, the most interesting part to me of the course launch was the acquisition of Pivotal Labs, right? So, so that's a, a, a very interesting angle, and, and you were at the announcement yesterday. I mean, Moritz yeah. was very prominent there, and any time Moritz gets involved, you got to pay attention, right? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, the press is enamored by this move, and, you know, and, and the folks on the ground here at, um, at Strata Conference that I talked to, Dave, have said, you know, a couple of red flags. One, the Pivotal project is spinning out, I've heard that uh, from some folks here. So what's the support distribution going to look like there? Um, what, how much assets are going to be supporting? Which distribution that, that Greenplum has? So that's another issue. And then the other one is um, the claim on 300 engineers, which I talked about on Twitter last night. They have three engineers working on Hadoop. Again, a lot of people in the community are like, well, does, are they committing code? Are they really working on Hadoop? Or is it internal to EMC? So I think Greenplum has some challenges. The good news is they had a great launch and the press are, is, is eating it up. You know, Wired Magazine, Giga Ohm, and you know, obviously we're all covering it. So I think that's a good thing for Greenplum, but again, the questions are going to have to be answered when this all dies down is, you know, can they support a customer base? If this Pivotal project goes as a spin out with Paul Moritz and team, what's the strategy there? How much will EMC be bankrolling it? These are all legitimate questions. Well, <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me, the other piece about the, the, the Greenplum announcement is it's Greenplum, right? So you're betting on Greenplum, and, and now it's going to be interesting to see can the EMC Salesforce continue to sell that into, into its base? I mean, EMC's, you know, they're box sellers, they're, they're salespeople, but it's a, it's a vastly changing company, it's a portfolio company, and that's really, I think, a key, is, is the distribution channel for a software-led company. Now, EMC has talked about, you know, going software-led, and what we call software-led, they call it, I guess, software-defined, they, they and VMware. It's not defined yet, so it's, so know, it's yeah, we'll yeah. see, it's not it's, yet defined. It's, uh, the, the cake is still baking in that oven, so, uh, I think that's, you know, there's a business model, you know, very intriguing business model angle there, but back to the Cloudera story, I mean, Cloudera's been consistent, you know, with its, its, uh, its positioning from day one. Now, of course, then is Hortonworks, which to me is even more pure from an open source standpoint. So, I think that that, that open source piece open is Open source is, will win. Is, open is source has a track record I think of we're winning. making that call, John. I mean, I think, yeah. right? I mean, that's, you I know. think the call is, I mean, open source will always win. It has win, has won historically over time. And I think what's going to be interesting about this battle is, is to be how much it will win. Um, so, um, okay, that's, that's the Green Plum Cloudera thing. The other news is that we're going to be talking about with Jeff Kelly is... Um, Intel. Intel and also the big data report. Yep. So, um, Let's, let's talk about that. Okay, yeah, so, so the Big Data Report, uh, Wikibon just released its, its second uh, Big Data uh, Report. It's the only study out there that actually details vendor revenue and, and market share. It's, it's broken it down now for the second year in a row. Uh, it's got a detailed forecast by the various segments, compute, storage, services, uh, 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 database, et cetera. Um, and some of the highlights, the market grew about 58% last year, up to 11.4 billion. Um, it's uh, forecast to grow at about that rate next year. It's approaching 20 billion by 2013 and headed toward 50 billion by 2017. IBM is the number one big data vendor. And John, uh, we were at IOD and we pointed out at that event that IBM is very successfully super glued its analytics business to the big data theme. And you know, depending on how you define big data, you can make it the market smaller or make it a lot bigger. Uh, you know, Chris Lynch has it at 100 billion, but. Um, so I think that there's- Where can there's they there's find that report? So they go to wikibon.org slash big data. Is correct, that yeah, it's, it's, it's there. And uh, you'll see that along with the big data manifesto and other, other works that we've done at Wikibon. I mean, John, you know, frankly, thanks to you, we really got into the big data market space probably before they were calling it big data, but many, many you know, years ago. And, uh, and, and as um, everything on the site, it's available for free. So please go check that out. A lot of people have commented what a great resource this is and you know, trying to, in the spirit of O'Reilly, you know, Tim O'Reilly, uh, uh, yeah. provide more value than you extract. So, so that's, you know, and then as I said before, MarkLogic, Cloudera, and Tengen are the top three Hadoop NoSQL players. Um, and um, 
You know, if in, the, in the predictions front, I mean, services is going to be continue to be the big one, John. Um, and it's in the boring but important category. Okay, so we are here live at SiliconAngle.com's coverage with Wikibon.org's research team with some really amazing research, uh, original research from Wikibon, Jeff Kelly, just about the market study. SiliconAngle has all the coverage on the ground here, straight up three days live. Um, and uh, we're excited to bring you exclusive coverage, interviews with thought leaders, uh, executives, developers, all the happenings in big data are happening right here inside the queue and uh, um, let's go look around and see what's happening outside the world. Are we going to go out and look at, uh, Mark, are we going to look at a clip? Okay, let's go, let's go out and see what's going on outside the Mobile World Congress going on today. After the break, we'll be right back with some footage from Mobile World Congress and analysis here on theCUBE at Strata Conference uh, here in Silicon Valley. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in tech news coverage. Those shows are just the tip of the iceberg and we're here for the deep dive. The market begged for our program to fill that void. We're not just touting off headlines, we also want to analyze the big picture and ask the questions that no one else is asking. We work with analysts who know the industry from the inside out. So what do you think was the source of this mission? So you mentioned briefly uh, there are... If that's the case, then why does the world need another software? We're creating a fundamental change in news coverage, laying the foundation and setting the standard. And this is just the beginning. We looked at all the programs out there and... Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, February 26th, 2013. Here's your Mobile Angle Roundup. Apple, the technology company that has become known for hoarding cash, will soon be making cash payments to irate parents. In response to a lawsuit over bait and switch apps, Apple has agreed to give users who were affected a $5 iTunes credit or cash if the amount lost was more than $30. The apps in question are those that were free to download but that offered virtual currency for sale within the game. Popular games like the Smurfs allowed and even encouraged children to buy virtual items, resulting in massive credit card fees for unsuspecting parents. Parents complained that those purchases could be made even if children didn't have access to the account's iTunes password. The settlement is awaiting preliminary approval from a federal judge, but once received, Apple will send email notifications to accounts that made virtual currency purchases. Firefox OS is off to a good start. SiliconANGLE broke the news yesterday about Mozilla's new open web device operating system, and the initiative is already getting support from major phone manufacturers. The latest high-profile partner is none other than Sony, who announced its commitment to launch a Firefox OS device in 2014. Interestingly, Sony has yet to release a Windows Phone handset. Currently, Sony appears to be focusing on less expensive handsets for emerging markets. Mozilla isn't keeping all its eggs in one basket. The company has put tremendous resources into developing Firefox OS, but they haven't forgotten their customers who enjoy the Firefox experience on other platforms. Although the final version of Firefox 19 was just released, they just provided new information about the beta version of Firefox 20. Already available for Android, the advanced web browser boasts a few interesting new features. Per tab, private browsing allows users to alternate between normal and private tabs within the same session, and new shortcut options for the home screen allow for even greater customization. The browser also supports additional devices and lower end phones. Users who plan on jailbreaking their iOS devices may not want to procrastinate. Apple is currently beta testing an update that kills evasion, the jailbreak method that was released earlier this month. Apple has been hard at work finding fixes for the vulnerabilities that are, that are exploited in what is being referred to as the most popular jailbreaking method of all time. 
It still may take a month or longer for Apple to roll out the patch to users, but an update is definitely on the way. Spotify, the music streaming service, has 5 million paying subscribers and 20 million users. Their success has almost guaranteed copycat services, and they may soon have an overwhelming competitor in Google. According to sources with knowledge of the situation, Google is in negotiations with major music labels with plans to roll out its own music streaming service sometime in the third quarter. Plans are to make the service available to all handsets, not just Android. Apple is also planning a music streaming service, but it's unknown when the feature might be made available to users. While such a service would fit well with Amazon.com's digital strategy and its family of Kindle products, Amazon has not yet hinted that they're working on a music streaming product. iOS is making large gains in the enterprise market, and that doesn't bode well for Android. Mobile device management vendor Good Technology reports that nearly 77% of devices activated by its corporate customers in the fourth quarter of 2012 were powered by iOS, up from 71% a year earlier. Android came in at 22.7%, down from the 29% Android OEM partners like Samsung hope to turn this around by heavily promoting Galaxy devices as essential for the enterprise with ad bites placed during the Super Bowl and the Academy Awards to promote its Samsung Safe program. Sony's planned Firefox OS handset shows the company's interest in emerging markets, and they aren't alone. At Mobile World Congress, Nokia just announced a pair of candy bar phones that it hopes will be competitive in the emerging markets. The Nokia 105 and 301 are simple, inexpensive feature phones with an extraordinary battery life of 30 days standby time. At $20 and $85 respectively, the sheer affordability could be the most attractive feature. Additional features include a flashlight and FM radio for the Nokia 105 and a 3.2 megapixel camera with panorama sequential shot and a self-portrait mode as well as exchange mail and Nokia Express internet for the Nokia 301. Both handsets will be available in quarter two of this year. Intel is making a bit of a show at the Mobile World Congress, debuting a new series of hefty mobile processors. Mobile manufacturers generally value battery life over raw power, and historically speaking, Intel chips tend to have issues with power consumption. In an effort to shed themselves of this power hog image, Intel's latest mobile processor line, the Clover Trail Plus, is designed to be not only more power efficient, but also have the brute force to carry Intel into the future. Both Intel's plans don't just stop there. Intel has announced the successor to the Clover Trail Plus line called Bay Trail. Codenamed Maryfield, the new Bay Trail architecture will not only be Intel's first quad core mobile processor, but the new architecture will downsize Intel's chip size from 32 nanometers to 22. These improvements mean that the new chip will not only be more power efficient, but increasing overall battery life, it will also double the speed of Intel's current tablet chip. Intel is aiming to push the new chip into the low-end market with an upcoming device partnership with Asus, going as far as to give some details about a new 7-inch Android tablet. Despite all of these improvements, Intel still has yet to release a multi-mode or 4G LTE capable chip, but they are looking to the future, commenting that they will be releasing a multi-mode version of their processor in the coming months. And that's your SiliconANGLE News Roundup for Tuesday, February 26, 2013. For the latest information on news of the day and tech innovation, stay tuned to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in tech news coverage. Those shows are just the tip of the iceberg and we're here for the deep dive. The market begged for our program to fill that void. We're not just touting off headlines. We also want to analyze the big picture and ask the questions that no one else is asking. We work with analysts who know the industry from the inside out. So what do you think was the source of this missing? So you mentioned briefly uh, there are... If that's the case, then why does the world need another software? We're creating a fundamental change in news coverage, laying the foundation and setting the standard. And this is just the beginning.
Hey, we're back here live at the Primetime Power Hour, 12 to 1, here at the event. At every CUBE event, SiliconANGLE.TV coverage, we'll have the CUBE, and we'll be doing a one hour segment, Dave. We just saw the news at uh, Mobile World Congress, and a breakdown from our news desk, our new program, every morning on SiliconANGLE. Uh, we're back. Um, John, I have to say, so one of the reasons I love working with you is because, um, you're a maverick. You're going to places where others might not. The, one of the greatest moments that I can recall and I'll share with our audience was at Oracle Open World two years ago when Larry Ellison essentially kicked Mark Benioff oh, off of his keynote. He actually didn't kick him out. He moved him to Thursday morning at 8 a.m. when everybody was all, already gone and hung over. And so Benioff tweeted out, hey, I'm going to be at the hotel across the street. You elbowed your way in there. You got right in the front row. You got the only, you had an exclusive interview with Mark Benioff, uh, which was fantastic, about you know, getting kicked off and about his you know, whole, whole message. Fantastic coverage. Yesterday, you were at the Green Plum announcement, and you took note that Green Plum uh, EMC had the gloves off. They were yes. taking shots at Cloudera. So what did you do? You grabbed the film crew. You went to Cloudera <laughs> to get a comment yeah, yeah. on the record. So take us through what happened there. What's your, what's your breaking analysis of what went down yesterday? Well, uh, we're going to go to the, the tape right now, but I just want to say that I went down there. I mean, obviously they're in Palo Alto, my hometown, and it's where our office is and where our studio is. And I want to get down there and get in, 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 in their office and get a perspective. I mean, in real time, we're all about real time. They're about real time. Um, EMC had an impressive announcement, some clever, clever tricks that they pulled with the, with the audience in terms of the production, but the solid announcement with the product. And so I want to get Cloudera's take on it because they just completely depositioned Hive and Impala. So this is my commentary uh, down at uh, Cloudera yesterday. This is Silicon Angle. I'm John Furrier. I'm at Cloudera in Palo Alto, California, on the ground where the action is. I was just in San Francisco this morning where EMC Greenplum announced Pivotal HD, a new distribution of Hadoop, their fourth try at, at Hadoop distribution. They put on top of the Greenplum engine, squarely targeted in the data warehousing space, trying to get into the Hadoop action, purpose built. It's a direct strike against Cloudera. They went after Hive, which is open source, and Cloudera's new Impala program. This is a very aggressive move, so we're going to Cl uh, Cloudera right here with the actions and get their official response on the record about their comments to EMC Greenplum. So we're going to go inside to uh, get the answers from Cloudera. The big question is, what are they, what's their response? See what their answer is. Okay, we're here at uh, Strata uh, Hadoop World, or AKA Strata, this Hadoop World's in the fall, we were just there. Uh, we're with Cloudera as uh, VP of our Charles Zedleski. Charles, welcome back to theCUBE for a conversation around some of the competitive moves in the marketplace. Yesterday, Green Plum announced uh, Pivotal HD, mm -hmm. another distribution, their fourth uh, try at, uh, at Hadoop. Yep. Uh, this time putting their proprietary uh, software, not an appliance, on top of uh, HDFS and a variety of other tools. But mainly the big conversation was yesterday was the, the, the bravado, the, the air positioning was very aggressive uh -huh. against Hive. And yeah. Hive has been a punching bag for, for many people these days. Uh, and also uh, Cloudera's Impala, you, mm -hmm. get, you guys announced, which is a you know, comprehensive new way to think about a data platform. So I found it striking in two ways. One is good to see Greenplum do a, a really good well orchestrated announcement, so there's a lot of sizzle. And they presented some steak, some beef as they would they, as we would say. So their steak was performance, SQL, and Hadoop, and they're positioning that to the IT community and to the world saying they are Hadoop. Here's some Hadoop with your data warehouse and using SQL as a way to say that's what we want to achieve. So one, I want to get your your uh, official Cloudera take on on that. Obviously, you know, people I talked to Cloudera yesterday, uh, you know, off the record, we're pretty confident. Uh, you weren't there; we couldn't we couldn't get you. But right. what is your take on the news in Green Plum? Obviously, Paul Moritz is, is a big name. I mean, he's got some chops, mm -hmm. and he was leading the video and leading yeah. the charge with this. And obviously, they're spinning out Pivotal from VMware. So, what's your take on this? Well, geez, uh, so many things. I guess to start, I mean. You have to say, to some extent, you're flattered. Uh, you know, last year we announced Impala, which was uh, the first and still only open source parallel SQL engine that runs on top of the Hadoop platform. And it lets a whole range of users that previously didn't have access to Hadoop data, the, the BI users, the, the SQL gurus, it lets them have a user experience on Hadoop data that just wasn't possible previously. Now, uh, now it's, it seems like it's time for, for Green Plum to try to follow our lead, and that's great. We always know that when you do something good, you're going to inspire imitators. I think 
you know, you mentioned four tries. I think maybe Flattery is starting to get a little stalkery, right? You know, we, you know, there's been, you know, green. There was MapReduce in the Green Plum database, and that didn't work out so well. And then there was Green Plum promoted MapR, and I guess that didn't work out so well. And then Green Plum had Green Plum HD, um, but now four times the charm. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see where that takes them. But <laughs> but well, so in some, well in some markets, th it's three strikes you're out. Yeah, you get a mulligan somewhere. Well, you know, or, well, you know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to discourage uh, uh, Green Plum from participating in this market. I think it is great that they uh, want to validate the idea of kind of a converged platform for big data. I'm hugely grateful for all the spending on airport ads. It's doing a wonderful job making the market, uh, and Cloudera benefits enormously from that. Yeah, so talk about the cloud air in, in particular versus vis-a-vis -vis this announcement. So, um, why would someone want to put all the stuff in HDFS and then pull it into Greenplum? What is their strategy? What is the business approach? What's their, I mean, I don't want to say business model because obviously they have a more proprietary approach, but you know, is the strategy going on to work? What's your take on the strategy? I think the vision, I think the vision that we laid out, the vision that we laid out last year was this idea of the platform for big data. I think uh, previously, it, when as Hadoop has been has been growing in popularity, uh, there's been this notion of um, that there's lots of different data management technologies, and they all have their place and right tool for the right job, and 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 that's and Hadoop's just one of them, right? And I think what we tried to get across last year was absolutely there's still lots of data management technologies, and they have different strengths and weaknesses. But make no mistake, Hadoop is the basis for the platform for big data. It's not, it's not a spoke in this architecture, it's the hub. Uh, and the fact that you can bring something like Impala to this platform is evidence of its longevity and its ability to grow and morph into surprising and different things that a database could never do. So I think that Greenplum is getting wise to that fact, right? They're validating the fact that Hadoop is the platform for big data. This is the basis for the data management architecture for the future. The world's still going to need databases and lots of other specialized technologies, but don't mistake that Hadoop is increasingly going to be the hub and these things are going to be the spoke. So Impala has been this elusive concept that you guys have well arti ar articulated and uh -huh. announced um, at uh, Hadoop, Hadoop uh, World. And yeah. yeah, it's in beta. It's not, and everyone's like, "What's Cloud Air up to?" It's a data platform. And platforms, you know, imply land grab, and, and everyone yeah. wants to be a platform. Obviously, that's the that's the take of things. But you know, you've also been kind of criticized in in some, in some cases by people trying to throw some fud into the market uh -huh. around its viability. So, okay. can you comment around the viability of Impala? You know, around hey, it's just a pipe dream. Cloud Air is you know trying to throw a hail mary here. And these are some of the things that people have I've heard people say about Impala. So, how do you well, respond to that? Well, that hurts. Uh, no, I mean, look, I, uh, we, we, put, we put something. Well, it's in beta, right? We put so something out there, which, we, uh, and when we went into beta, we'd already had customers, and we, ex we, launched, we announced with Expedia. Uh, so that's always nice to like launch a product into beta, and it's already been in private beta for a number of months with customers. It's probably going to be GA in the next uh, month or two, so not that far away. Um, yeah, and but you, guys been, you guys have been quiet, though. Uh, you know, not, you're not pumping it up heavily like, like oh, a we, green we let, we, let, we let our customers do the talking. And in fact, if you follow Twitter or if you follow blog posts, there are at least half a dozen spontaneous blog posts by all kinds of different users uh, that have already adopted Impala. That's the beauty of open source, right? This is already, you go look at a blog post from uh, Stripe, um, which talked about how they've already incorporated Impala into their day-to-day uh, -day usage of Hadoop. So it's already, it's already making its way in the world. By the way, you talk about its viability, I, I like my ads a lot better than I do uh, that of a proprietary query engine. Like we've seen this story before. If you remember two years ago, the same vendor was uh, promoting this time a proprietary file system, and they were saying, oh, uh, "Yeah, Greenplum is saying, oh well, you need a fancy file system. You need this MapR file system. It's got secret sauce. It's faster, right?" They made a lot of aggressive performance claims then. That was one of six different proprietary file systems that were all milling about trying to uh, take something away from HDFS. They are almost all gone now. Most of them are out of business and, uh, and or they've been shelved as HDFS alternatives. Do you think, do you think Greenplum is a credibility problem? Well, uh, I'll say fourth attempt and now I you mentioned say, these yeah, claims. I, uh, I'll, let, I'll let customers be the judge of that. I would say that the gap between a product announcement and product availability has been rather long. I mean, we're kind of approaching the duration of like a Duke Nukem sequel, right? Like, you know, yeah. like Chorus was announced, I think it was about two years before Chorus was actually out there. But I think more than the credibility issue, I just want to go back to the idea that at Cloudera, we really believe that open source wins, right? There were six different proprietary competitors to HDFS. 
all of them have fallen. HDFS is far and away the industry standard for how you store data. Now we're seeing the same thing again with SQL, right? So Greenplum is one proprietary SQL engine. There are, there are numerous others. Some of them are small companies, some of them are big. But I think history has shown that open wins. I think that's why Hadoop is as popular as it is. And I think that's why Impala is getting the traction it is. And I think it's why it makes uh, folks that have a lot to lose uh, really, really nervous. So uh, we were having some Twitter conversations last night about uh, this announcement, which we were really excited to, to see a great show by EMC. And, yeah. and you know, I like Scott Yara, and Bill Cook's awesome over there. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started talking to some folks in the industry, they're like, what, there was a lot of questions around support, right? Open source is obviously one of the key things that we all, we all believe in, but at the end of the day, it's all free code. Yeah. Support makes the difference. So sure. the question on the table is, uh, and, and what's your, I want to get your take on this. Um, Greenplum has multiple versions of distributions out there. Right. How, do you, how are they going to support all that, and what, is, what do they do? I mean, as, as someone who's in the product group in Cloudera, if you were on that side of the table, do they sunset everything immediately? I mean, what's the customer impact? What are some of the, the issues that they have right now? I mean, it's obviously they seem like you know, they're, they're groping for a strategy, and now they have a new one. It sounds good, and the product yeah. was impressive. I mean, performance benchmarks look good. Yeah. They were touting some serious speeds. But I want to, I want to again, I want to say, Two years ago, they made another set of performance claims, this time around their other Hadoop distribution, uh, and those all turned out to be provably untrue, right? And I think that the, the, there should, we, should, we should take away a lesson from this, which is that a vendor might be credible benchmarking their own software, but they're probably not the most credible source for benchmarks of a competitor software, right? So um, let's let, I think the nice yeah, part about it. They really slammed Hive and Impala on the benchmark. Yes, I think the nice part about open source is uh, anybody who wants to prove this out for themselves can download the software themselves, and try it for themselves. At least they can with open source software. I don't really know if that's possible with Greenplum, uh, but at least with an open source platform like Cloudera's, anyone can try it, anyone can see for themselves what the performance is actually well like. Well, the claims were 100 times faster, it's interesting, but I want to get back to the uh, customer. So sure. I know that you guys, I mean, I've been doing some digging around and doing some investigative uh, pro poking and prodding, and you guys, I and mean, you're in the executive committee at, mm -hmm. <laughs> at Cloudera, so I know that you, you're pretty well media trained, so I know you're not going to answer the question uh, around customer references, but, but in general, I've been checking around, you guys do have some serious references on Impala and, mm -hmm. and aren't talking about them. Yeah. Uh, is that because big data is, is really a really sensitive issue, right? I mean, because I want you to talk about the, the use cases of your deployments, because um, you know, what we're seeing is that people don't want to talk about their architectures because of hacking and some other proprietary yeah. um, concerns that they might have with their infrastructure. Because when you start talking about big data to the extent of a data platform, there's a lot of new things going on. So can you talk yeah. about the use case of Impala mm -hmm. and then compare and contrast that to like say Greenplum SQL data warehousing product? Sure. Well, yeah, I think, I think in terms of references, obviously, like I said, we launched with Expedia. I suspect when we go GA, we'll probably have at least one additional reference to go with that. So I think we've tried to be forthcoming with some of them. But the U.S. government and the banks aren't going to be like exactly. In fairness, exactly. In fairness to a lot of our customers, it's just, it's just not a good deal for them, right? Like, it's good. It's obviously great for the technology, and it's great for us. But, you know, for, for folks that, that work in a, in a large financial institution or... Uh, uh, a retailer or telecommunications firm, you know, what's what's really the upside of sharing that information? It's not, a, not an especially good yeah, yeah. trade. We try to make it as, as good a deal for them as possible. I mean, in terms it of those cases. Taste, it gives a little taste yeah. of the customer base. What well, does it look like? What's the portfolio well, look well, like? So, uh, well, the customer base as a whole has obviously grown uh, grown tremendously. There are several hundred uh, production Hadoop instances that we support today across any number of different industries. At this point, all five of the top five commercial banks in North America run Cloudera. Um, three of the top four credit card payment networks run Cloudera today. Um, uh, every major, uh, I think three of the top five media companies run Cloudera today. Three of the top five Fortune 500 retailers run Cloudera today. Um, we're also starting to see great traction in Western Europe, uh, in Japan. I think two of the top three telecom carriers in Japan now are Cloudera customers. Yeah, I mean, Amers in so Korea right now. Amers in right? Amers in, Amers in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's there, he's there. Where's where's Mike Olson? Working a StarCraft game, but. Uh, where's Mike Olson? Uh, uh, he's not here. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, look, the, the adaption's been fantastic, right? We're, we're okay. really, we're really really fortunate. Cloudera is up to about 320 employees. Obviously, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not making that possible uh, on the back of venture money. That's, that's customer revenue that's funding that growth. Um, right. but, but by the way, getting back to your point about use cases. So from Impala right now, we're seeing it open all kinds of new possibilities, right? So we're seeing customers that want to use Hadoop to process data, but they weren't able to do kind of short cycles, submitted SLAs. Now they're able to do that thanks to Impala. We're seeing customers that previously, when they were doing like data science, like they were doing uh, some kind of analytic model or machine learning, before uh, 
uh, they were they were basically having to, 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 to copy data out to a database just to do some interactive SQL, yeah. just to explore the data. Now they're able to do that all that resident on the Hadoop data at the same economics as, as, the, as the rest of the Hadoop stack. You know, Greenfield had a great announcement yesterday. One of their slogans uh, in terms of pr uh, presentation, one of their slogans was um, the, uh, Harper uh, Reed from uh, uh, Obama campaign was their, was mm -hmm. their uh, show horse there and yeah. announcement. He said big answers, mm -hmm. okay, which I like. It's a, you know, big data is it's about big answers. But I, I, would com I would actually say to Harper, I don't think that that's the right, right slogan. I think the right slogan is the right answer when mm -hmm. and new answers. So uh, what we're tracking at Silicon Angle Wikibon is kind of old way, new way, right? So yeah. what's interesting about Greenplum is can they cross over the old data warehouse, I mean, is it the fastest horse and buggy, or is it the new car that everyone wants? So to me, what we're looking at is, what are the new use cases? What's the emerging business value? So, yeah. you know, as people think about a data platform, that's kind of what we're looking at. So folks watching, that's one of our areas, and that's what we'll be asking all the guests here well, today. I, I think if you, if you want to handicap where this is all going to go, I think there's a couple different things you want to look at, right? So one is, one is business model. So, you know, companies like Greenplum, and there's lots of them, they come from a world of very, very expensive systems, many tens of thousands of dollars per terabyte under management, right? Hadoop makes big data much, much more economical. So the question is whether or not a company that's been addicted to those very, very high fees is going to be able to, is going to be able to function in a world where people are used to being able to have all the data they want without having to worry about serious economic consequences. I think the second big thing is around how well can you integrate with the rest of the Hadoop stack, right? Can you, can you say that you're going to have one security model, that you're going to have one set of schemas, one set of objects, one data model? Uh, are you going to be able to share resources between not just SQL but MapReduce and potentially other ways of working with data in the future? So I think that um, the, the degree to which you're able to work with the rest of the Hadoop stack and really provide a unified experience, right? I think that's another big uh, consideration yeah. for users. And then the third thing is goes back to open source. The advantage you get when you deliver an open source technology like Impala is it just makes its way out in the world with very, very little friction. Yeah. It's easy to bundle uh, into our existing distribution. It's easy to, to, to have people trial. It's easy for people to run at scale and not worry about the consequence of license. These are really advantageous things and it's one of the major reasons why we've had so many big companies bet on Cloudera so early in our life. Yeah. Well, Greenplum had an impressive announcement yesterday with Pivotal HD, obviously all the sizzle, and they had some steak. The question is, what kind of steak is it? Uh, what, kind of, what kind of cut of meat is that did they, did they present? And we'll be looking at it. And I like their software-led approach. I love how it's software, mm -hmm. so you know, good message. As they say, it's their fourth attempt, probably their last try. It's go big or go home time mm -hmm. for Greenplum. Yep. So it's exciting, and, and thanks for breaking that down. My final question for you is, uh, as, the, as the VP of product of Cloudera, and you yeah. guys are growing at ridiculous pace right now, over 400 people and growing, and I hear you got some new movement in new big space, et cetera, uh, soon. Um, what do you tell your product guys? And, you know, they see the Greenfilm announcement. Obviously, I'm hearing from you know, other, other uh, people in the community. They're kind of ruffled feathers here with this announcement from Greenplum. So you, you know, what do you tell the troops? You assemble the troops. What do you say? Stay to your business. Competition's good. What, what's your answer there? I, I tell them Christmas came early. Or late, I guess we're on the late side of it. I think, look, we, we told the world that the, that the future, that Hadoop was the platform for big data and that the future was these converged systems where you could bring different ways of working your uh, working with your data to the same system, right? And you know, it was a little lonely, it's always a little lonely as a leader and to have someone who wants to follow us and, and, uh, and, and verify to everybody else that that's really the future of data management. That's fantastic, I think it's, it's great for our business. The future of data processing, an old term coined in by IBM and the mainframe guys now coming back to, to life, the word data processing is going to be a very big trend. We're watching it, yeah. Silicon Angle and Wikibon, and uh, you know, Greenplum is going hard. They put a stake in the ground trying to steamroll the community. Charles, you're in, on, the, on, the, on the Cloudera side. Thanks for your comments and appreciate your time. That's the Silicon Angle TV's coverage of uh, Strata Conference in uh, Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. We'll be right back. Thanks for your time. Thanks, and time. All right, good. I just spoke with Justin Erickson, um, and uh, the, the, the feedback was very clear from Cloudera. They're obviously not surprised by EMC Greenplum's announcement being aggressive in that uh, they're entering the Hadoop market. Um, notable comments from Cloudera clearly are confidence. They have a lot of confidence in their in their strategy, but they, they're really critical of Greenplum because it's their fourth try uh, entering the distribution business, and they are still carrying multiple distributions of Hadoop. Uh, but more importantly, um, the general sentiment is it's a cheap man's data warehouse with SQL. But really the big question comes down to throughput versus latency and also going beyond SQL. And the real question that's on our mind and others is what is beyond SQL? Is the future of data processing just SQL and purpose-built solutions, which Greenplum appears to be, 
and will this affect the ecosystem? Also, I asked directly about the comments around Green Plum's aggressiveness against Hive and Impala, which is a direct strike to the entire Hadoop ecosystem. And Cloudera's response was, uh, quite frankly, surprising to me. They were, in a confident way, they said, welcome to the competition. It's a real compliment to Impala and a real endorsement to the uh, uh, Impala as the gold standard. Um, but I think uh, that's an initial response from Cloudera, and I think the, the wheels will be turning here in Cloudera all through the night, uh, getting ready for Strata and their other messaging. And I think this is going to be a wake-up call for Cloudera and everyone to really understand the impact of the aggressiveness of the EMC move. And again, Cloudera is continuing to pioneer uh, Hadoop in use cases that cut across multiple markets. The EMC Green Plum thing, as noted by some of the Cloudera product managers like Eric, uh, uh, like Justin Erickson, is that this is one segment of the market. It's the data warehousing market. Uh, Teradata is really the main target, other areas like that. It's really just data warehousing with SQL. It doesn't address the real innovations going on around the ecosystem, around emerging data business value. And I think Cloudera's position will continue to be pioneering that global data value, the business value, doing things, doing new use cases. So interesting that Cloudera's slogan is big questions and uh, Greenplum was promoting the concept of big answers and getting things fast. But the good news is competition brings out the best in people and Cloudera has always risen to the occasion. Let's see if they can here. I think they have to sharpen their pencils and get people run a little bit faster on Impala and we'll hear from them uh, at Strata. But right now, um, they're not surprised by Greenplum, and they're confident, and they look at it as just another data warehousing with a querying of SQL. Not a big threat. They're confident, and uh, we'll see them at Strata and get some more information. We looked at all the programs out there and identified a gap in tech news coverage. Those shows are just the tip of the iceberg and we're here for the deep dive. The market begged for our program to fill that void. We're not just touting off headlines. We also want to analyze the big picture and ask the questions that no one else is asking. We work with analysts who know the industry from the inside out. So what do you think was the source of this mission? So you mentioned briefly uh, there are... If that's the case, then why does the world need another software? We're creating a fundamental change in news coverage, laying the foundation and setting the standard. And this is just the beginning. Silicon Valley in Santa Clara, California. It's John Furrier, Silicon Angle. We just saw the segment where I went to Cloudera to get their opinion on the EMC announcement yesterday with Green Plum, Pivotal HD. The Cloudera response was no comment at, at the actual event. We had Charles, the VP of product, here inside the queue in the morning for a sit down conversation around their response. Um, and I'm joined here with uh, Dave Vellante, Chief Research. Uh, and co-founder co of Wikibon.org, and Jeff Kelly, big data analyst at Wikibon, who just released his second uh, groundbreaking um, market sizing of big data. Again, leading the charge. You guys, first of all, I just want to say congratulations on the big data report. Thank uh, you. Jeff and Dave, you guys have done some, again, amazing work at Wikibon. I love working with you guys because, uh, one, you're all about free content, unlike the competition, Gardner and IDC, which charge, and others. Um, more importantly, uh, the relevance of the report, so congratulations. Um, let's, let's dig dive, dig, dig, dig deep into this uh, Green Plum, Cloudera war, now skirmish, now full war. Obviously Green Plum took the gloves off again. We were commenting earlier, great announcement. Jeff and I were in San Francisco yesterday uh, in the Dog Patch studios for the announcement. Again, a well done show by EMC. EMC knows the enterprise. They know what's going on with the customer base. We also have Cloudera, also knows what's going on. They're pioneering Hadoop. 
Um, Jeff, I want to start with you. You're, you're, you're back from San Francisco. You were just at the Intel announcement with their distribution of Hadoop. Um, but let's talk about uh, the Cloudera Greenplum situation. What's your take on, on one, the announcement and what you're hearing since the announcement. Obviously, a lot of stuff going on on Twitter. We have a lot of folks coming through the cube here, putting out their opinions, some dissenting opinion around uh, Greenplum, some positive uh, comments from Bill Schmarz and others. Obviously, he works for EMC. <coughs> Um, what's your take? <laughs> well, I think uh, you know overall, I like the vision put forth by Greenplum. I think the idea of bringing SQL uh, tools and, and databases into, inside of Hadoop is really the future of uh, of big data, a single comprehensive platform rather than kind of tying things together with connectors. So, you know, from a vision perspective, I think it's the right it's the right direction to go. Um, you know, in terms of how functional it will be in the you know early uh, in its early iteration, it remains to be seen. Um, you know, I think that the the potential negatives are obviously well. First of all, now Greenplum has I last count, and I could be wrong here, but I think they've got three distributions of Hadoop now. Um, so they got a map bar. Right, right, so the, there's the map bar, there's Greenplum HD, which was, until yesterday, was their distribution, which, they? which they're going to continue to oh, support. Yep. Okay. So. And they're going to continue to invest so in. So they sold a bunch. And, <laughs> and that's based on uh, Hadoop 1.0. And now Pivotal HD, which is based on Hadoop 2.0, which includes uh, some, some more fe features and functions around HDFS. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, that's a little bit confusing to the market. Um, there could also potentially be some performance issues when you're applying uh, you know, a Greenplum, a, uh, an MPP database, but not designed to sit in, in a kind of a network cluster like Hadoop. Um, so there are some issues there around data locality, um, uh, support for uh, append-only tables, uh, you know, things like that. So, you know, there's going to be some functionality they're going to have to work on. Um, again, I like the vision. Uh, remains to be seen uh, in terms of execution and how it's actually going to perform. Um, and then, of course, you've got, this is, you know, maybe calling it a response, a direct response to Impala might not technically uh, be accurate, but it's pretty close. I mean, this is, uh, I think the whole market understands that bringing this kind of interactive uh, analytics capabilities to Hadoop is, is key, and this is where the market's going. So this is really Greenplum's uh, uh, attempt to, to, to meet that demand. And of course, Cloudera with Impala, um, you know, certainly have some interesting, uh, it's got a lot of buzz at the last strata Hadoop world, but uh, you know, we have heard it's you know, still in uh, beta, still very early days. Um, so, you know, it's very early, uh, it's, but it's interesting to see everyone's kind of going to this point. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's no, no doubt that people see HDFS as a store for, with, with data. The different approaches is what comes up, right? And so we had Bill Schmarzo on from EMC Consulting, and he made an interesting reference, Dave, talking about uh, the BI market in the enterprise. And so, obviously there's a lot of people sitting, I don't want to say on their hands, but sitting on ex pre-existing solutions uh, in the enterprise based upon data warehousing technology that's kind of laying around are, are still there, and there's this untapped market of BI. And it's clear that Greenplum is going after that. They've tried other attempts against Teradata, for example, going to rip and replace. That was a failed strategy, we know that. Uh, when Greenplum sold to EMC, they tried that sales approach. Um, that crashed and burned, but this time, it looks very viable. Um, so one, strategy-wise, for EMC at least, they go in and get some beachhead. Two, the other notable thing that I would point out Jeff, that I liked with, uh, with what was announced with Pivotal HD was um, the software approach. So Dave, comments on one, the software-led approach with software, and two, the BI market. What's your take on that? Well, first thing I want to say is, John, I want to go back to the first Hadoop world that we were at. EMC had just acquired Greenplum. Uh, we had just released a study on the BIDW you know, data warehouse market and what a mess it was. Um, and Greenplum, essentially did a press release that they were either doing a connector or had developed a connector. I think it was one of those, you know, hey, let's do a press release and then we'll develop the connector kind of thing for Cloudera, which of course at the time was the really only game in town. At EMC World two years ago, we squinted through the EMC Greenplum announcement, which included the MapR distribution and said, hmm, this is interesting. EMC's relationship with Cloudera is going to get a little chilly they are not going to let Cloudera run away with this thing. You remember the discourse we had there, nobody was covering this, yeah, and, yeah, that's, yeah. and that's all we could talk about. And Cloudera thought they were in the lead, and they were like, you know, brushing things <laughs> off, like, hey, we're the cats meow, the no problem. And at no the problem. time, we said, it was May of 2011, we said this marks the start of the platform wars in Hadoop. Mark our words, it's going to get, you know, really heated up, and that's exactly what's happened. So, it's very clear to me in strategy meetings, and remember, I've been following EMC back when they were a memory company. This company 
thinks long term and it also vigorously attacks marketplaces. So in strategy sessions, I guarantee that it's sitting there saying, how do we get a piece of the action? Because we want to sell hardware, we want to sell software, we want to sell services, and if we can own the platform, we can make more money. I guarantee and, that's the way and they're it's thinking. And you know? it's not just Cloudera, obviously Cloudera is the, the one they're taking the shots at or challenging or entering the market, uh, and Cloudera is takes that as a compliment, that's just code word for we don't have an official response yet, but we have Charles on record now with, with an actual response. Uh, tomorrow we're talking with, um, with Josh from EMC who runs the product management. We have Scott Hauser from Adapt, and we're also going to have Hortonworks on. I mean, remember, this uh, cloud, uh, Greenfield announcement doesn't just affect Cloudera, it affects Hortonworks, Teradata, and a variety of other open source Adapt, community. Adapt, MapR, all these guys. All these right. guys, so we will hear from that uh, throughout here at theCUBE at Strata Conference. Um, but uh, Jeff, I want to get your take on, on the horses on the track. Obviously, it's a growth market. There might be some consolidation. We're going to be maybe t maybe talk about that later. But yeah, I mean, I smell consolidation down the road. Certainly, competition at this level heating up means that there might be some shakeouts. There might be some acquisitions. There might be some formations. But remember, your big data survey points out the market share. So please share with the folks your analysis on the market share, market sizing, percentage of services and product, and and where is that, and what does that mean to all this? Sure. Well, I think you know, in terms of the percentage of uh, software to hardware to services, I think you know, uh, services is the biggest part of the market right now. Uh, if you look at services, professional services and cloud services, um, I think what's going to happen over time is you're going to see uh, the real the real value is going to shift from. Uh, the hardware and the technical services to more of the um, value add professional services, applications, application development, uh, that really allow companies to tackle specific business problems with Hadoop and big data. Um, so I think that's kind of where the market's going. In terms of you know, the horses on the track right now, I mean, we, we were talking earlier, Dave, I think there's, we, we ticked off at least six companies with, with their own Hadoop distributions at this point. Uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, uh, Greenplum's got three of their own, now Intel, so, uh, you know, I IBM. don't. IBM. IBM, Win Disco, Win Disco, sure. So, Fujitsu, right? So I don't, I don't, I don't think the Silicon market. Silicon Angle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the market can sustain that many Hadoop distributions uh, in the long term. But it's interesting, uh, as you said, everyone sees this as an opportunity to, uh, if you own the platform, uh, that's really where you can start adding value on top and just really. Let's, let's be more specific. The, the market cannot sustain no. six, seven, eight distributions. It, Here's how it works, right? The, the, the first guy in, number one, makes a mm -hmm. lot of dough. Number two makes a little bit of dough. Number three barely breaks even, and if you're less than number three, you're not going to make any money. Mm -hmm. And that's really the, the way it is. And, and so you've got to be in the top two. Or, or else you're not going to make any dough. Right, well, and, and the different companies we talked about, you know, some it's, it's more important for some than for others. So certainly Cloudera and Hortonworks, it's all about winning the market in terms of the Hadoop distribution, that software. Um, and in the case of uh, Hortonworks, the, the services that go along with it. If you look at something like Intel today, they announced you know, their own Hadoop distribution, but it seems pretty clear to me what they are, they're most interested in, in uh, expanding adoption of Hadoop. So Catalyze, they can, they're a catalyst. Right, so, right? They can, so they can sell more, more chips, but uh, so, so to me, I don't even think, if, if their uh, particular distribution did not win the market, I don't think they'd even be that disappointed. If yeah. it, it served its purpose of actually uh, 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 getting others to really uh, accelerate their Intel's development. Intel's an accelerant, exactly right. Exactly right so, yeah. you know, I think, you know, I think for, the, for those couple pre pure plays at the top, Green, uh, sorry, Cloudera and Hortonworks is very important. Uh, Greenplum, uh, you know, again, I think I'd, I'd probably include them in that group as well. Um, but some of the others, you know, they're, they're looking at some of the value add services and other things uh, that they can add on top. So, uh, it's really an interesting market, I think, two or three Hadoop distributions is probably the most this market can sustain over the long term. So, uh, remains to be seen who, the, who those winners will be. But right now, you know, we've done our market size. Cloudera is, uh, in terms of revenue, certainly leading the pack with over... Well, right now it's Cloudera and MapR are, right. are getting it done. EMC's throwing a lot of, well, a lot of weight behind it. Right, well I should right. point out, and, and EMC uh, did, did make clear, they've got 60, over 60 paying customers, Hadoop customers specifically. So, you know, that's potentially more than I think so people third. thought. They're third right now. Is um, that right? They're third or? Well, Cloudera's it's, it's hard one. because if you break out. Map bar number two. Right, well it depends how you EMC break out. EMC and Hortonworks number three, I mean. The question is how do you break out Greenfalm's revenue? Yeah, yeah. Hadoop versus the, the right, database. So right, right. it's it gets a little fuzzy when you start looking at that, but I'd say they're. So they're fourth. <laughs> okay guys, so, so that's, that's the end of our uh, lunch primetime power hour here at theCUBE. We break down the analysis top story. Again, the top story here uh, today, 
day one of Strata Conference is one, a lot of announcements around new distributions of Hadoop, and obviously the competition is heating up between the big players, fighting out for leadership around their versions of distributions of Hadoop and their approach, one large scale, thinking new, one pre-existing enterprise with IT, and that's EMC versus Cloudera, and then the community, Hortonworks, MapR, others. So that's the big story, SiliconANGLE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break here, live at Strata Conference, O'Reilly Media Strata Conference in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, wikibon.org. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>